What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Girl Who Talk Sports, a podcast where we talk sports and other girly things. I am Sam Cardona, and thank you guys so, so much for tuning in this week. It's another solo episode. We have a lot of things to cover. I purposely put out the episode a day later than normal because it was the NFL trade deadline and it ended on Tuesday at four o'clock. Uh, it is now Tuesday at seven o'clock at night. So the trade deadline is passed over and we are going to go into this very, I mean, it really wasn't worth the wait to be quite honest with you. Everything that was exciting that was going to happen already happened and yes, some things that are interesting, but not really. But we will get into that. We will get into NFL Week 8 recap. We have some tea to go into. So we have a very great show lined up. But before we get into that, guys, don't forget to subscribe on all podcasting platforms, wherever it is that you get your podcasts from. Please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you are watching right now on the YouTube channel, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up for me. Once again, I am asking you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are trying to get 200 subscribers before the NFL season is over. So please, please, please tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your grandma, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can reach that. And on social media, you can find me on Twitter at TGWTS Podcast. I try to live tweet every Sunday during the football games. Um, if you do follow me, you saw me on Monday Night Football last night during that Giants-Chiefs game, which we will also speak about today. I have a lot of thoughts, um, so make sure to check me out on Twitter, and you can check me out on Instagram and TikTok at the girl who talks sports. Much easier than the Twitter handle, but it is what it is, and that is about it. Now, there is one more thing before we get into um, the content of today's episode. And that is something that I've been very excited to share with all of you. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw a very strange post from me a few weeks ago of me standing outside, looking up at the sky and squinting at the sun. That is what this is about. And I'm very, very excited to get into this with you guys. So I'm just going to tell you about this real quick and then we will get into the episode. If you guys have ever wanted to rep your team in a different way that isn't clothing, this is such a great product for you guys to check out. And again, if if you guys are looking for something different, this is what this is. And this, what I have in my hands, and I will explain it to you guys who are listening on the podcast, are a pair of sunglasses. And these sunglasses are great because on the side of the sunglasses are these blue and red and white arms and they are so cool and they are to be inspired off of the New York Giants. So I am quietly repping the New York Giants with these sunglasses. They have black frames and blue lenses, which I actually customized myself. You can customize yours as well. Um, But what's really great is they don't just have football. They have hockey. They have basketball. They have baseball. All the pro teams, they are inspired for the arms of these sunglasses. It is very, very cool. So you can rep all of your teams. And you might be saying, well, Sam, I I don't want to rep, uh, you know, well, I want to rep my teams, but I can't buy a pair of sunglasses for every single team that I want to rep. And that is what's really great about these sunglasses. So these are Team Click sunglasses. And why they're called Team Clicks is that the arms are detachable. The arms come off of these sunglasses and hopefully it makes a satisfying sound into the microphone. Found a new pair. I bought a separate pair of these and they click into place. So the other sunglasses arms that I have for my sunglasses are the Buffalo Bills are inspired. So as you guys know, I love the Buffalo Bills. They are like my secondary team that I root for that actually win games. Um, No shade at the Giants there. But I have two footballs here, but they have baseball, hockey, basketball, whatever team that you want to rep, Team Clicks has those for this. And what's great is that you can buy the, the arms separately. You can buy a pair of sunglasses, and then you can buy as many arms as you want to just easily detach and reattach back on. It is just fantastic. You can click the link in my bio that says on any of my social medias, my link tree, it says, uh, this is even on my YouTube channel. You can click up in the corner of my page. There's a little link tree button and click on the team clicks link at the top. 
and check out the website. Check out these sunglasses. The holidays are right around the corner, people. They are right here. And if you need a special type of gift for the sports fan lover in your life, make sure to check out Team Clicks. It is super, super awesome. And if you use my link, it will help me. It will help the show and just continue to get better over time. So thank you for listening to my little spiel there, but really they are great sunglasses to check out. So please make sure to do that. So now, uh, now that I've spent the last five minutes, um, you know, talking in your ear, let's talk about some football. And what I want to talk about first today is the very notable injuries, two in particular that we are going to discuss today. We'll start with the lesser one and move on to the more, um, I guess, I don't want to say important. It sucks to say that, but one that more people are talking about. First one we're going to talk about is Jameis Winston. He is out for the year with a torn ACL. It is just real sad, honestly. I mean, the Saints were not horrible. I mean, they weren't the best team, but they were not looking too bad. But Jameis Winston, unfortunately, is out for the rest of the season here. Taysom Hill is also out with a concussion. However, I have a lot of thoughts about Taysom Hill. I love Taysom Hill as a tight end. I love Taysom Hill as a wildcat quarterback. Don't want Taysom Hill to be the starter for the New Orleans Saints. And with him out, they pulled in their third string quarterback off of the bench. It's a name that we've heard of before. Trevor Simeon. Trevor Simeon came into this game and won against Thomas Edward Patrick Brady in a division game. I don't know what it is about regular season Saints, but they are Tom Brady's kryptonite, apparently. They are just, it is incredible. So... Trevor Simeon came in. I don't know if Trevor Simeon is the answer for the Saints. Uh, I know that it's possible that they might be looking at some people to come in as the full-time starting quarterback. But uh, for now, I feel like Trevor Simeon will get the job done. They'll, it, he'll get what needs to be done for the Saints team here. Um, I mean, if you saw, Jameis Winston is such a gem. Like, he is such a gem of this world. He was seen like after this win big win they're celebrating in the locker room like they just won the freaking super bowl they cut to they, they got the pan the, the pan to Jameis winston in the locker room he's got the full leg brace on he's got two crutches and he's still dancing out here and i was like you know what Jameis? congrats that is just that is the energy that is needed and he seems to be a blast i know me and um my pal andy hopper who uh you guys know from the brew party uh, our friendship bloomed because of Jameis Winston. So I must give him that. And it, it really means a lot to me because actually our friend anniversary is coming up. Me and Andy will have been friends for a year. Same with uh, my friends, Tom and Hank. I just went on, uh, you know, you guys know I'm co-host of Big Blue Avenue that I do every Thursday now. And Tom and Hank and I have been friends for over a year now because about a week ago was my first appearance as a guest on Big Blue Avenue. And now I'm hosting it, which is just wild, honestly, but we're getting off topic. Now, quarterback situation for the Saints. They are not pursuing Cam Newton. I've discovered they are not going down that route. However, someone that has just come out of nowhere just was like, just raised his hand and was like, hey, if you guys need me, I'm here. And his name is Philip Rivers. Phil Rivers said he would come out of retirement to play for the New Orleans Saints. Is that not the most amazing thing that you've ever heard? I would love that. I actually tweeted at the official Saints Twitter saying, pick up Phil, you cowards. Sign him. Do it. He's like, I don't know. He's just doing amazing as a high school coach, but he is also just like the most outrageous person ever. They need that energy. They need to keep up that energy. But... As a game, as this game, as a whole, wow. Just absolutely, completely took down Tom Brady. I mean, a pick six towards the end of the game, you give him a minute and a half. I mean, minute and a half left in the game for Tom Brady, nine out of ten times, he's winning that game. We saw that one, that one game that he doesn't do it, and it was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. I mean, Tom Brady was out here just flinging the ball wherever he wants. And it just didn't work. Didn't work this time around. So Tom, 
you know, I mean, they've only lost twice this season and people will automatically just start going like, oh no, the, the Tom's human. Yeah, he's freaking human. Let's, let's be real. You know, Tom Brady makes mistakes sometimes. He's not a perfect human being. As many of you people put him on this pedestal and he's great. I mean, he is the greatest quarterback of all time, but he's still human and he makes mistakes. So honestly, at this point, they, what are they? They're six and two now. They honestly should be five and three because the Patriots should have beaten them. But y'all aren't ready for that conversation yet. But yeah, so that's what's going on with the Saints. That's what's going on with uh, the QB situation in terms of injuries. The other injury that we're going to discuss is a more, um, I would say on the fantasy football side of things, people are very, very sad. Derrick Henry is out for six to 10 weeks, which is mostly the the rest of the season here. So it's, it's not looking too great. I mean, maybe if they, you know, if they get into the postseason, it's possible he can come back for the playoffs, but for the regular season, at least Derrick Henry is not playing. He had a foot injury. He got surgery today, I believe, actually on Tuesday, the uh, second. Oh my God, we're in November? Guys, when did that happen? When did we enter November? How did we get to week eight of the NFL already? I'm just, that's blowing my mind, but we don't have time for that. The Tennessee Titans ended up signing Adrian Peterson to replace Derrick Henry, which is kind of wild. I didn't even know AP was still in the mix here, but they're giving him a shot. And while he is an all-time great in the running back position, he's still a lot older. Actually, let's uh, let's Google. Hey Siri, how old is Adrian Peterson? Adrian Peterson is 36 years old. 36, my Siri is Irish. He's an Irish man. 36-year-old running back? He's a bit aged, a bit aged, right? So... <laughs> While he might fill the hole a little bit in terms of their run game, I just, it's not Derrick Henry and it will never be Derrick Henry. So the Titans, I think, will struggle a little bit without him, but also they still have A.J. Brown, Ryan Tannehill, and Julio Jones on their offense. I mean, we, we can't forget about them, right? I know the Titans rely so heavily on Derrick Henry that you forget that there are other really good people on their team. It's like kind of strange, but I don't think the Titans, I'm sure that there will be games that they would have won with Derrick Henry that they might lose, but I don't think, I'm not too, too afraid for the Tennessee Titans because they're still, they're still good. And let me just say something. I don't think the Colts are as good as people are thinking that they are. When that Sunday night game, I think we talked about it last week with um, Ashley and Nicole, on last week's episode, I said I, the Colts didn't win that game. The 49ers lost. Yeah, I th- I'm, I'm still standing by that. I really just don't think the Colts are not all that great. And we just saw the Titans beat the Colts in, in a very close game, mind you, but still came out on top. And that's a division win, which is really, really important. All right, just moving right along here. We also had the week of the backup quarterbacks this week. And, oh, yeah, you guys know where I'm going with this one. I've been so excited to talk about Mike White. Mike White, oh, my God, literally the most random man on the face of the planet. Like, he literally could have been someone they found outside the stadium and was like, you play football? Come on, you're going to start for the New York Jets. Uh, That didn't happen, but he went to Western Kentucky, which isn't even, like, real Kentucky. It's Western Kentucky school, like, not even, like, this, like, big name. But he played amazing in college, and he's been in the league for a few years now. Here he is getting his time to shine, and he is not holding back. Mike White broke a record for the Jets that hasn't been, hasn't happened, not a record, But he's done something that hasn't happened in the last 21 years. In the year 2000, Vinny Testaverde for the New York Jets threw for over 400 yards in a game. 21 years ago. You want to know what hasn't happened until this past Sunday? A quarterback throwing for over 400 yards for the New York Jets. And Mike White did that. Mike White did that. How crazy is that? I am just... 
it's incredible. And my dad, shout out to my dad, who's been a Jets fan since he's like 12 years old, um, just was like, this is this is incredible. We were like so excited watching this Jets game beat the Bengals, the Bengals that have had the quickest turnaround in like NFL history, I feel like, in terms of injuries and as a team. Like, what a big win for them and so exciting. They are actually playing Thursday night football against the Indianapolis Colts. And I'm very excited to watch this game because I am excited to see what Mike White will do with a quick, with a, like a quick turnaround, with a fast week, short week rather. Because if he comes out here, because he's officially starting, Zach Wilson's still not back yet. If he comes out here, balls out on Thursday Night Football, why would Robert Salah put Zach Wilson back in after he gets healthy? I mean, given that predicament, yes, he was a second pick overall in the draft. But, I mean, if he's not winning you games, why would you put someone in who's not winning you games. So I I would honestly, if Mike White performs well in the lights on a short week, I would say, why not give him a chance? Why not keep Mike White in? So this is just his style of play also for the New York Jets seems to be working better for him. And he's probably learned from the best like Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers that you don't need to do these big, giant plays in order to be a great quarterback and and win a game, which I think Zach Wilson has been trying to do. He's been trying to do too much. He's been out here just, like, trying to be this superstar, and I just don't think it's working for them. But Mike White came out. He's nickel and diming them. He's just making sure he gets five, six yards at a time, gets down the field, gets the first down, and gets to the end zone. And I feel like even um, Mike LaFleur, who is their offensive coordinator, is using more aggressive play calling with Mike White because he can. And that's not something he can do with Zach Wilson. And I think that's very telling. Robert Salah has not even said Zach Wilson is our guy. Like, he has not said, like, yeah, Mike White's great, but Zach Wilson's our guy. Has not even said that. He said, quote, unquote, anything is possible which is amazing. It is absolutely just incredible to hear that. So is it possible that Mike White plays for the rest of the year and maybe wins the Jets a few more games? According to Robert Sly, anything is. So honestly, I would love to see Mike White. I would love to see Mike White continue to play and Zach Wilson be like, oh crap, like I messed up. And like, it's not his fault he got hurt, but Everything happens for a reason, and I love to say that, and maybe it's Mike White's time to shine. Also, I just want to briefly talk about the AFC North because of the fact that the Bengals just lost to the Jets, and the Steelers and the Browns played each other also on Sunday. Very rough game. The Steelers came out on top in a most random score of 15-10. This division, the AFC North, is so much tighter than I expected it to be. I was, you know, I was thinking that the NFC West was going to be the hardest division in this league. The AFC North is so, I mean, the Ravens didn't play this week. They run a bye, but the Browns lost and the Steelers won, which I believe they're now tied in the league. Uh, the, the Bengals just got a loss on their belt and they were tied with the Ravens. So I feel like there's a first and second place right now with four teams, which is wild to think about. The AFC North is super duper duper competitive. Not anything that I was expecting. Another backup quarterback to grace us with his presence was Cooper Rush, who came in for an injured Dak Prescott for the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night football. My word, did he do he he did it. Honestly. He, he really did it. And I kind of forgot that we used to do like tweet of the week and stuff. So I'll throw a tweet of the week this week. Um, and I'm going to do it off the top of my noggin because I didn't save it. But it actually made me genuinely laugh out loud that there was a picture of Cooper Rush. And I remember it was Mina Kimes who tweeted it out and said that Cooper Rush looks like he would play Carson Wentz in a movie about the Eagles Super Bowl run. Chef's kiss. That's our tweet of the week this week. Cooper Rush came in. <laughs> got a 20 to 16 Sunday night win over the Vikings. The Vikings, oof, that's rough. 
One year ago, Cooper Rush didn't even make the roster. And he came back here. He played in a game. He won. Like, that's... I'm pretty sure he said this, but that's what dreams are made of, right? Like, that is, like, the ultimate story that you would hear in, like, a movie about football. So, good for Coop. I mean, 24 for 40 passes, 325 yards, two touchdowns. His first touchdown, actually, I found this bit of information. I believe it was from ESPN. He threw a 73-yard touchdown to Cedric Wilson in the third quarter, which was the longest throw in the first start for a Dallas Cowboys quarterback since Roger Staubach in 1969, which was a 75-yard touchdown pass. How Cooper Rush, in your first, first start ever, Sunday Night Football, you do something that is compared to Roger Staubach, one of the like most amazing Dallas Cowboys of all time? Just, I'm so... Uh, the backup quarterbacks are... Fantastic. But there is one thing that we always have to remember. And that is, I, and I don't want to demean their performances. I mean, I'm speaking praises for both of them. And one of them is a Dallas Cowboys. So that should just tell you right there. The defenses did not prep or don't have tape on a lot of these guys. So the defenses really don't know how to deal with backups or new guys who come in because there's just no tape on them to watch to prep for it defensively. So I feel like that's something that we just have to keep in the back of our mind. But it's not taking away from the fact that Mike White and Cooper Rush did not have great, um, excuse me, great performances in their respective games. Now, the the only thing that's different about Mike White and Cooper Rush is that Cooper Rush did enough to win that game. But Cooper Rush is still a backup quarterback. Cooper Rush is not going to bench Dak Prescott Um, for the Dallas Cowboys. Cooper Rush is just a good, solid backup quarterback that came in and did what he needed to do, won the game for them to save the spot for Dak. And Dak will be grateful for that. However, on the other side of things, Mike White is willing, not willing, but is trying to take Zach Wilson's job. And Zach Wilson is very much um, scared. Well, I don't know. He didn't tell me this, but I feel like he would be a little nervous that he might lose his starting job to a man named Mike White. I also just forgot to mention about the uh, Philly special Jets edition. They pulled off the Philly special and Mike White caught a touchdown in the end zone. Just, again, incredible, amazing. When they did it, I was like, that was definitely the Philly special. And then, of course, like two minutes later, I get a Bleacher Report notification that's like, the Jets ran the Philly special, the New York special, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, they, they're out here doing things. I love backup quarterbacks, and I love when they, like, do well, and you're like, wow. Well, even Trevor Simeon. We could add Trevor Simeon to this mix, too. He's a he's a, not a new guy, but he's a third-string quarterback who came into the game and won it for them. Why not? This is just a, a – I'm developing a title for this episode in my brain right now, so stay tuned for that. And once again, moving right along here – um. I am wearing my New York Giants shirt today. You can't can't really tell in the video because it's white letters on top of a white shirt, which I love. I'm very minimalistic. This is from um, Aaron Andrews' line called Wear by Aaron Andrews, um, which I love. I'm still repping the Giants today because we were that close. <laughs> we were that close to beating the Kansas City Chiefs, and I am so sad. But also, I feel like there were so many things in this game that were so good that made me feel good. Not the coaching. Let me just say that right now. The players are who made me happy, especially the defense. So before we get into the Giants, though, let me just say really quick, the Chiefs look like trash. They really, really do. And I I vouched for them this past weekend. I even said, you know, Chiefs are still going to win this game. They're still the, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Giants aren't going to win. The Giants almost did win. Almost. Didn't. But, alas. The Kansas City Chiefs barely won that game. Barely. They got lucky with the fact that we, could, we can't run a two-minute drill to save our lives, apparently. If we had the opportunity, like, if we could have ran a two-minute drill properly and, like, did what we needed to do, the Giants were going to win that game. 24 to 20. The, the, the actual 
stat, the actual score that I predicted would have happened, but nonetheless, they're dropping balls. There's penalties. There's still the weakest offensive line. Patrick Mahomes has gotten hurt left, right, and center. This Kansas City Chiefs, I don't know what is going on. I don't know what has happened, but everyone expected them to win this division. And now everyone's like, yeah, Chargers are Raiders. Chargers are Raiders, really. Some people might even argue the Broncos if you really wanted to. But the Chiefs, my God, horrid. I think they're 4-4 four and four now. 500 season. You have a, five, a point five hundred season right now in week eight. That's not at all what I was expecting. But on the Giants side of things, their run, um, the run defense was great. The pass defense was great. John Ross caught a gorgeous ball on a pass interference call, which was just glorious. Some things that are not so good. For some reason, we can't stay healthy. I don't know what's up with the conditioning or what's going on. Shep... And Tony came into this game after being out for like two weeks. They came back in. Both of them are now hurt again, which is not not what I want. Because when Kadarius Tony's in the game, he does great. I love watching Kadarius Tony play. And after all this time that we were like, yeah, no, Kadarius Tony, whatever. We don't know where his role is. And like now we know his role. It's incredible. Kenny Galladay is still hurt. Um, so we don't even know what's going on with that. But why can't we stay healthy? If we, if the, de- okay. The defense is really uh, was really struggling with their injuries that have happened, including Andrew Thomas and uh, my man Blake Martinez. But we seem to be improving on the defense. We seem to be still doing what we need to do. In terms of the offense, I mean, the receivers are out, and it just does not. Like, like John Ross surprises me every week, but we can't live off of John Ross and, you know... Darius Slayton even, I feel like, doesn't even do that much. We still have Evan Ingram, by the way. Spoiler alert before we get to the tra- trade deadline. Evan Ingram is still a New York Giant, which is... Beknownst to me, I don't, I don't know why. But the main problem here with the New York Giants is somebody's got to go. Somebody has got to go. Jason Garrett, Dave Gettleman most likely. Joe Judge, you can argue, but I don't think... John Mara has, like, hooked his train to Joe Judge. He's not going anywhere. Dave Gettleman, however, they they have been, quote-unquote, quietly looking for his replacement. Jason Garrett, I feel like, has been doing kind of better play calling, but not too much. I mean, we've been a more, bit more daring, not as conservative, but it's still not working. And... Again, a two-minute drill. We should be able to run a two-minute drill, get down the field and score and win a game. Don't know why we can't do that. We have all of the pieces throughout the game. It was just great. We were, like, catching balls, running the ball. Devontae Booker is out here running the ball all over the place. I think this was the best run game we've had all season, not even with Saquon, which is a whole other thing if we're actually going to pay Saquon money even though he hasn't done anything for our team. Oh, I am. I didn't think I'd get this heated, but here I am getting very, very heated. However, somebody's got to go in the front office. It's most likely going to be Dave Gettleman. The one thing on Joe Judge's end that I really wish happened in this game was that timeout at the end of the game. They waited until the two-minute warning when they could have had like 40 extra seconds on the clock if we just called the timeout with the one timeout that we had left. That's when you got to use it, man. That's when you got to use it. Waiting until the two-minute warning, like why, why would you do that? You just basically killed almost a minute off of the clock. So that was something that definitely affected us in our game, which was not great. But yes, Giants need to stay healthy on all ends of the ball, need to stay on the field there, and just work on things, just tweak some things, because we're right there. We just almost beat the Kansas City Chiefs, and I really wanted it. I wanted it so bad, and I even I went into that game with zero expectations. I didn't, th- I didn't expect us to win that game. By the time halftime came around, though, in the third quarter when we were leading... 17 to 14, I was like, no way. This is not happening. No way that the Giants are going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday Night Football right now. So I'm a little, um, I'm a little upset. However, there's, there's things. The good thing is that there, we know what to fix. It's just whether or not someone is actually going to fix it or not. And that is called anxiety, my friends. And that's how I feel about the Giants-Chiefs game. Okay, now... 
let's do some segments. And by segments, I mean my one segment and my favorite segment on the show, Tea Time. (laughs) Tea Time is my favorite segment on the show because we delve into the hot steamy gossip of the sports world. And this week, it's uh, kind of sad, honestly. Uh, I did not even hear about this. Um, our pal Sporty Jordy, Jordan Gerard Coupe, told me, and then right after she told me, about an hour later, I got the notification for it that it was happening. Henry Ruggs III from the Las Vegas Raiders, wide receiver Henry Ruggs III, who is 22 years old. He was drafted last year, I believe. So just, you know, just starting his career in the NFL has probably just straight up ruined his life as of this morning, Tuesday at like three or four in the morning. He was driving while intoxicated, which kids don't do it. Don't, don't drink and drive. We'll never put you in a good situation. Facing a DUI charge. And not only um, is this just a regular DUI charge, but unfortunately a woman died after uh, due to him crashing into her car So he was driving and he hit the back of her Toyota RAV4. The car caught on fire and unfortunately the woman died inside of the car. So just want to say that my thoughts and prayers and good vibes are all going towards that woman's family. It's really, really unfortunate that that happened. And um, when the police showed up, Henry Ruggs was there. Um, He seemed to be inebriated and have now looking into an investigation on this whole situation. No charges have been filed yet. However, I'm going to assume that at some point charges will be because not only is this a DUI, but I would consider this vehicular manslaughter if the uh, law and order in my brain is telling me that correctly. What I found out is that Obviously, this happened in Vegas. The, the, the Raiders were just on their by. Like, he was probably just trying to have a good time on his day off and unfortunately chose the wrong decisions to drive his car while he was intoxicated. But when you get a DUI in Nevada, the state of Nevada, there's no probation for that charge. You go to jail, like, immediately between a two and 20 year sentence. There's no, there's no probation in terms of you how to do community service now. So it seems like no matter, and whether it's like, you know, the least amount of two years, it seems like Henry Ruggs III is going to be serving some jail time for the crime that he committed, which is unfortunate. You hate to see these types of guys uh, go into the league and start performing really well and doing everything, and then they just make some stupid decisions and completely waste the opportunity that they had to lead a different life in the NFL. So very unfortunate. And uh, all I have to say as well is while I was looking this up and I found an article about it and I was reading it and I was like, okay, it's giving me all the information. And when you get to the end of the article, especially articles like this, I would say nine out of 10 times this happens. They end the article with statistics for that player. They go into this whole thing about the charges and what has happened and the things, the consequences, so on and so forth. And at the end, it's like, oh yeah, Henry Ruggs the third place for the Las Vegas Raiders and has this many yards and this many receptions and this and that. And I just want to say, I feel like we should just remove that from the article. If you want to end it with... Henry Ruggs III is a wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. Okay, I get that. Some people want to know who he is. I get that that's information. I just don't see how their statistics give any sort of addition to an article that way. It's like, yeah, you just wrote a whole article about this man drove intoxicated and then killed somebody. And now you're listing off his NFL stats. Maybe we should just ix that. Should we just stop doing that now? I don't think we need it anymore. I really don't. It really bothers me every time I get to it. And I, I remember last, or not last year, but maybe two years ago, when I did my favorite tea time, which was the Earl Thomas tea, which is when his wife 
or girlfriend or whoever found out that he was sleeping with another woman and also his brother and she found him on Snapchat maps and showed up and like pointed a gun at him while he was having sex and like that was like a crazy tea time. And I remember at the end of those articles, it was like, here are the, all the stats for uh, Earl Thomas on the Baltimore Ravens. I was like, what? I don't want to read about his stats. I want to read about this that this event that happened. So I won't go on anymore. But that is um, something that we should stop doing at the end of articles. And that is our tea time for this week. Now, let's get into what we uh, waited this whole day for. And that's the NFL trade deadline. And how it has disappointed me to no end. Um, Let's start with the one that happened the other day, which is the most exciting trade, I think, to happen um, this year. Uh, Apart from the Zach Ertz trade to the Cardinals, which we discussed already, is the Von Miller trade from the Broncos to the Rams. So Von Miller has been traded to the Rams as of two days. No, yesterday. This happened on Monday. Um, and the Broncos have a second and third round draft pick for 2022, and the Rams just gained an even scarier defense that they had than before. And with Von Miller on the Rams, with Von Miller joining Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, why, if the Rams, okay, trying to formulate my thoughts here if the rams don't go to the super bowl this was a bust this whole thing was a bust if the rams don't go to the super bowl and win what was all this for getting stafford getting von miller doing this whole thing i just it's it seems just absolutely absolutely just a waste of time this they have three draft picks next year people They have three 2022 draft picks, the Rams. That's it. The entire draft. So if this doesn't work, they have three chances next year to fix it. How? I don't know. I don't know how you can fix a team with three draft picks. If they do, I mean, props to them. They're super duper smart. But they need to get to and win the Super Bowl this year. That's just the bottom line. It is just absolutely wild that this is another addition. And I'm so excited to watch the Rams play now just to see what teams get absolutely obliterated when you have both Aaron Donald and Von Miller on that line and Jalen Ramsey in the secondary. Just absolutely crazy. It's uh. So, yeah, in my opinion, Super Bowl or bust for the Rams Super Bowl win or bust for the Rams. Otherwise, all of this, the Stafford and everything, completely just a waste of everything. Let's get to the stuff that happened today, um, which is four trades. Four trades happened today, and only one of them was really not even, like, super exciting. I'm excited about it because I predicted it, and I was, like, very proud of myself for it. Like, I did, like, trade uh, research and, like, trying to find out who needed what and who was available and who was thinking about going places. Um, And I went on the Fantasy Underdogs podcast on Monday night and I was asked who I thought was going to be traded. And I said, I think Melvin Ingram is going to get traded and most likely go to Kansas City. And that's what happened. So I'm just very proud of myself for predicting that correctly. So Melvin Ingram has left the um, Pittsburgh Steelers. He is going to the Kansas City Chiefs, who needs all the help that they can get at this point. And um, the Steelers are getting a 2022 sixth round pick. Melvin Ingram was serving as basically a backup for people who are injured in the Pittsburgh Steelers, specifically Alex Highsmith um, and possibly TJ Watt if something had happened to him. But now that Highsmith is back in the lineup, it's just they don't need him. And he quietly... Asked for a trade. He didn't want to make it a big deal, which I think is very professional and kind of the way to go. Just like, hey, like, I know you guys don't need me anymore, so I would just like to get traded somewhere else where I can perform. And they did what needed to be done, and they gave him to the Kansas City Chiefs, and they got a six-round pick out of it. So I think that this was a very professional trade. Not really exciting. Again, outside linebacker, again, that the Chiefs absolutely need in, in every sense of every word. They just need help everywhere. 
Um, so that was like the other main thing that happened today. Now I'm just going to basically list off the other ones uh, because I really just, I don't know. The NFL, tra- I thought this was going to be crazy. I thought we were going to see OBJ get traded and it didn't happen, which I'm really mad about. I wanted to see o- Odell just like talk about how much he hates Baker Mayfield and Kevin Stefanski and he's like, I'm free. I'm out of this place. Blah, blah, blah. Like, no, dude, you're still a Cleveland Brown and that sucks for you. Also, I actually retweeted something on the, uh, on my Twitter, and it was from Emmanuel Acho, who said that basically Kevin Stefanski comes in and and they start winning games because wide receivers, like star wide receivers, get less reps because they spread the ball around. And um, he just wanted to mention that. He's like, it's not, oh, it's not Baker Mayfield not giving him the ball. It's his coach. So you're like basically bashing the wrong person, which I thought was very, very good. Um, A few other people, like I said earlier, Evan Ingram was not traded anywhere um, from the New York Giants, which I kind of wanted, but it is what it is. Deshaun Watson obviously did not get traded to any team. Otherwise, we would be like crapping our pants right now. But Miami was smart enough to say, hey, I don't think that this is a good idea. And also, I believe the Texans were like, yeah, we're not trading him anymore. So Deshaun's just going to go sit somewhere and collect his checks. And now hopefully we don't hear about him for the rest of the year. I'm sick of talking about him, honestly. Um, and also, this just a random, random thing. The... Um, Oh, two random things. Well, Jalen Smith from who was originally on the Cowboys and then went to the Packers for a few weeks, he's been um, released. And also Deshaun Jackson from the Rams was waived. So those are two kind of interesting things. I was surprised to see um, Smith get released after they just picked him up, but it is what it is. But the other three trades that went down, um, the Eagles received rookie quarter cornerback Terry Vermint, Ver, I can't even read my own handwriting here. Vanint Jr. They got a cornerback from the Broncos. Um, I don't know. I just wrote. I I got this new pen, and it like makes me write really weird. Um, so I can't even read my handwriting here. The Broncos got a 2022 sixth round pick for that. I mean, the Eagles, I guess, just need help in their secondary. I don't think their secondary is very good. So working with it there. Uh, the Jets. Oh, this one's kind of interesting. The Jets received um, guard Dr. Laurent Duvernay Tardif, who is the doctor who like took the step away from football to deal with COVID. And they did the whole story on him, which was like super, super cool. I think he was our feel good story one year, um, one time, one episode. But he is now a Jets. He was on the Chiefs. So the Jets, they didn't even swap. So They got him and the Chiefs received tight end Dan Brown, which is interesting because it was obvious, especially in this Monday night game, that Travis Kelsey is just off his game. Like, I don't know where he was at this entire game, but he could barely catch a ball. So uh, getting a new tight end in Dan Brown might be some help for the Chiefs. They seem to be doing the the most work today because they realized last night, like, oh, crap, we got to fix some stuff. And the last trade I got here is the 49ers got an edge in Charles Omanihu, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, from the Texans who got a 2023 sixth round pick. So that is the trades that happened today. Again, we're kind of hoping for something more exciting like a Deshaun Watson or an Odell Beckham Jr. However, that did not happen. It is what it is, though. Honestly, kind of Kind of glad the trade deadline's over. Now everyone's set in their place and let's, unless someone gets picked off the waiver wire. Um, I have a feeling Deshaun Jackson's just going to be sitting there. Someone might pick him up. So it's um non not very exciting trade deadline. We've had more exciting ones in the past. However, the past few days and weeks with Zach Ertz and Bob Miller, those were pretty crazy trades. And that is everything that I got for you guys today. Um, Hopefully we have a guest next week. I kind of hate doing this by myself now. I really like doing this with other people. So hopefully we have a guest for next week. 
Um, also, just like I said earlier in the episode, please make sure to check out the Team Clicks website. Um, super, super cool sunglasses. Again, really great gift for the sports fan in your life. Check out the link in my social media bios to check that out. Um, Team Clicks link. And finally, yeah, guys, don't forget to follow me on all social, on all podcasting platforms, rather, um, wherever it is that you get your podcast from to listen to The Girl Who Talks Sports. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, The Girl Who Talks Sports. Once again, if you're watching on the YouTube channel right now, give us a thumbs up on the video. Oh, real quick. Um, I'm compiling together a bunch of sports stories, funny, sad, weird, dramatic sports stories from my followers to do a extra content video. So if you have a funny sports story that you want to share with me, send me a DM, comment on the YouTube video, whatever you want to do. Cause I want to just, I have a bunch, but I want to get more. I want to talk about more stuff. So send me your funny or sad or weird or dramatic sports stories from any sport. Doesn't matter. Or, or somebody else that you know it happened to somebody else. Send them, send in their story. Pretend it's yours. I don't care. Um, actually, don't do that. That's plagiarism. Finally, don't forget to follow me on social media at TGWTS Podcast on Twitter and on Instagram at the girl who talks sports. Everyone, I hope you all have a fun, fantastic, sports filled day, and I will see you all next week for NFL Week 9. Bye!